Hello, friends. <laughs> well, what's been going on at my house this week? Uh, I always have a lot of projects going on here in uh, my Mexican retirement home. And this week, a few of them are coming to completion. So I want to show you some of the things that I've uh, been working on. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Off times, before I get started doing whatever I'm doing for the day, I like to go for a walk down by the lake. That's Bruno, my neighbor Carol's dog. And this is a night heron. Where did that black bird go? He, he was here, it was a boat tail grackle, and he was here on the path, and he was doing something with something, and then he took off and left it there, and I picked it up. It's a beetle. And I think I saved the beetle because it's alive. It's not real lively but it did move. Is that the biggest beetle there is? Is that the biggest beetle there is? <laughs> you mean here in Mexico? Yeah. I don't know about all of Mexico, but it's the biggest kind I've seen around here. The largest beetle is the Titan beetle. This one is 6.5 inches long. They come from Colombia, Ecuador, Bolivia, South America. Speaking of large insects, this is a book that my son co-authored, Ghosts of the Trees, and it's about walking sticks. And here is a picture of Peter's mother, that would be Miss Lynn, holding a walking stick that's 24 inches long. It's on page 40 of the book. Right, look under his abdomen there. He's got wings. All beetles have wings. Okay. You want to? No. You want to hold it? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, here, hold out your Thank hand. you very much. Oh, come on. No, I, I, come I on. can look at it really nicely no, in your hands. On, thank you. Come on. It's okay. <laughs> no, thank you very no? much. I I like seeing it in your hands. Do you want to tell us the story about getting recognized in Berkeley, California, uh. from my videos? <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Well, maybe I should have put you on something where you got a little more camouflage, but hey, sorry, B, you're on your own. Well, you know, he's too, it must be too big for that, for the uh, crow or the bow tail grackle. I don't know. He was, maybe he was just curious. He might have been doing the same thing we were doing, just checking him out. Minus the <laughs> video. <laughs> well, this is one of the projects I've been working on. It's a uh, pantry for our kitchen here at our Ahihik home. I went online to see how much it would have cost me for the same materials which I bought here in Ajijic, Mexico. How much it would cost for the same materials if I bought them at Home Depot in the United States. And uh, I'll give you the details of this project and those numbers in a minute. But I have to tell you, I was shocked at the difference in the cost. And it made me appreciate... Um, my propensity for having projects going on and um, not unlimited funds t to fund them, it made me appreciate, again, living here in Mexico in my retirement life, uh, being able to afford to build something like this, whereas in the United States, um, I probably wouldn't have done it. Too much money to entertain myself. <laughs> Projects have always been my entertainment. Indulge me while I show you some of them. That is my office, and I put it on wheels so that I could roll it into my locked storage room when I leave for a few months at a time to go RVing. Um, this 
computer desk. I converted it to a computer desk from an old organ. I built this Murphy bed and all these projects are just from raw lumber. Lumber like those boards you see laying there. I built all of the cabinetry in this bathroom. Um, and that storage area up there. This door I actually built from raw lumber, including the frame and uh, some Mexican construction here. I don't know if you can tell, but this door is really funny shaped. It's got a flat spot over there on the side. But uh, working at it, I finally customized it and it works perfectly. I converted the Singer sewing machine into a sink. Of course you know if you've watched my videos for a while that I built the Rumford fireplace. A very special kind of fireplace. Rumford. Years ago I put the tiles into the top of that bird's eye maple dresser. I also built these arched doors myself including the frames. Number two, number three, four, and I have one to go. This bathroom we redid and that cabinet there I built from raw lumber including the lattice. Sawing all those <laughs> really thin pieces with my table saw was an all-day project. One of the projects we've completed this week is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. You can see we have scaffolding set up. That bedroom window up there is the only window in the house that doesn't have an awning or some kind of an overlapping roof that keeps the rain from coming right into it. Just thought I'd show you my favorite chicken, the kind that doesn't crow. This is the kind of monsoon day you might have to just close up all of the doors and windows. But not every day is like that. Sometimes it's just a rain that comes from straight up in the sky. Like this day, it's just raining straight down. There's no wind. But before we put up this new awning, that window had to be closed even if it was raining straight down. The new rain cover is up. And it's raining. The screen is dry, not a drip on it. As long as the wind isn't blowing, we'll be fine. It's a rainy day here. I want to meet the Mexican who laid this patio out and made the lowest spot right over here in the corner by the door. No, I'm not talking to you. Do you want me to talk to you? I'm talking to my friends. Oh. What you doing? I'm reading. What you reading? Um, about this lady cop. About a lady cop? Yeah. Okay, enjoy. Well, I started to, I turned the camera on to tell you, I'm making lentil soup today on this rainy day. And we usually like to put a little chopped carrot in our lentil soup. I just got that out of the garden. Might be a little more than a little this time. Another project that turned out to be a nearly full day of working happened without uh, my knowing it was going to happen. A very unexpected thing happened. A guy knocked on my door from Telmex, the telephone company, and asked me if I'd like to have a fiber optic modem. And of course I explained I don't have a fiber optic line, which he already knew, and for free Took me a while to be convinced that this was going to be gratis. 
Uh, but as soon as I agreed to let him do it, I went on the internet and looked at some forums and found out that, in fact, Telmex is converting their customers at no charge to fiber optic. And um, I agreed to let him do that, and I spent all day helping him because running a fiber optic line from the street down my Pravada and up and over my house and through my walls and behind my fireplace is a little bit more than a standard uh, hook it to the side of the house installation. Anyway, um, here's some video of the guy that came and gave me a new modem for free. This is Alex from Telmex. He came and knocked on my door today and um, offered to change out my old copper lines for DSL from Telmex to a new fiber optic line. <laughs> and it's free for the installation and uh, my bill doesn't go up. That's how I'm understanding it. So, gracias, Alex. Thank you very much. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, the same glass. <laughs> Do 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 I blow in Spanish for my 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 others subscribers? Claro que sí. Este, pues aquí estamos haciendo una instalación de fibra óptica aquí en Ajijic Chapala a la orden. Okay. Alex Rivera. <laughs> Gracias, <laughs> Alex. Alex liked my property a lot, so after we finished getting it all installed and working, he asked if he could go back up on my roof and take some pictures for his wife. I enjoyed Alex, he was a neat guy to spend the day with. That's the new modem over there, and the tape is so that you can't read my password. Um, the first time I tried it, I got 199 megabytes up and 111 down. Uh, before, for my 39 pesos a month, uh, 390 pesos a month, which is about $20 a month, um, I was getting 25 up on a good day when it wasn't raining and it was intermittent sometimes when the wind blew because of the old copper lines out in the street. I had to move my base uh, phone over here by it because it's also uh, now um, telephone service, landline service uh, by fiber optic. And that seems to be working even better than the old system as well. Eventually, I'll get the base moved back over there where I used to have it in the kitchen because when we built the house, I laid telephone lines underneath the floor that go clear back over there by the kitchen. I'll figure that out eventually. In the meantime, I've got a, one of the remotes over there where we like to have the phone and are used to running to when it rings. Well, back to the kitchen pantry project. This just dropped on me out of the tree. But the tree that has this kind of avocado on it, it's in the neighbor's yard a long ways from here. Something's been chewing on it, probably a squirrel, and it just dropped it on me. Hey, not funny.
I made some progress on my kitchen cupboard pantry cabinet. Got the uh, basic structure built. One's redoing the roof. This is the last little piece I got to put in. I got these louvered doors. Don't look at my messy workshop bench. Got these louvered doors. They're uh, seven foot tall, 84 inches. Gonna work out just fine. One of the things that you have to deal with when you go to the lumber yard in Mexico, at least the local one here in Ajijic, uh, prices are pretty good. But this is dimensional lumber. It's supposed to be, uh, well, it's in meters, of course, or centimeters, but it's basically uh, 10 by 12. And in the United States, that would be something like, you know, nine and three quarters by eleven and a half. Here, this side of these boards are all lined up. Now, it's also not square on the end, but it's actually ten foot four inches. Um, these are the edges. Let me see that in the camera. They range from... 12 and a half to 11 and a half and that's why I have all these little pieces cut over here because I have to run them through the table saw to make them all the same width just another step in dealing with rough cut lumber and by the way uh, I bought these as primeras not Segundos, so it's supposed to be better than seconds. The view from my workshop party boat. Good news, the doors fit. Well, I'm done spray painting. And when it dries, I'll be able to put it together, but I'm gonna need help moving it to the kitchen because it's heavy. I won't put the doors on until it's in the kitchen. I was hoping to have that finished for you and show you a picture of it all completed and sitting in the kitchen. Well, I didn't get it done. Maybe next week. I've got the receipt here for what the project of the kitchen pantry shelves cost. This is from the local hardware store just a few blocks from my house. I bought seven boards, an inch thick, 12 inches wide, and 10 foot long. I got 100 screws, I got two louvered doors, and I got six brass hinges. And the total was 3,081 pesos, which is 154 US dollars. And then I checked online with Home Depot to see what this would have cost me to do in the United States. And for the same materials list, it was $408. $408 versus $154. I also bought a can of paint, a gallon of paint, white semi-gloss. It was uh, 390 pesos here which is about $20, and in the United States at Home Depot, it would have been $37. All of which makes me really glad I'm here doing my projects in Mexico. And I want to thank you for indulging me in the remembrance of all of the projects I've done here at my retirement home. 
I also want to take this moment to thank all of my new subscribers. It seems like uh, somebody found my channel somehow in the last uh, month, and I've got a lot of new subscribers, and I appreciate you. You know, I lose subscribers when I go for six months into the United States, into my motorhoming, RVing life, and I know a lot of you who are interested in the North Shore, Lake Chapala, Ahihi, Jalisco, Mexico. You don't give a rip about RV, but that's okay. I do the channel for my entertainment as well as yours. And I just wanted to say I appreciate all you new subscribers. Thanks. And for those of you who are watching and haven't subscribed, you know how this works. Please. I have 40,751 subscribers today, but hey, who's counting? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.